I, but that night when I went to bed, I saw a light come over my bed and it went from one end of the room to right over me. And I felt like this light could see me. I felt like it loved me and I felt like it really knew me. And I was really scared for this light to see me because I was like, I'm not, I'm hiding. I'm not, I could just tell I was hiding a lot of myself. And I was like, oh my gosh, go away, go away. I was like, saw this light. I tensed up and I told it to go away over and over again, which was not really nice, but I didn't really know what it was. And I didn't mm -hmm. really realize for a while that I didn't realize that that light came to me because of what I wrote. I, um, you know, I really thought I was going crazy, but that when I told the light to go away, I started feeling tingling in my head, um, spreading through my head, like love and peace. I thought it was a headache, but it was just love and peace going through my head. And, um, it then, if a voice came into my head when I relaxed and it said, you don't have to be afraid, but if you are, you can wear a hat. It was like a very peaceful voice that just came into my head. And said, <laughs>this is Dale Cross and welcome to another edition of the Soul Inspire podcast. This is the audio video podcast that features spiritually awakening souls to help inspire you on your own soul journey. On this episode, my guest is Rebecca Castle. She is a pediatric speech language pathologist, energy healer, and angel interpreter who underwent a life-changing spiritually transformative experience, STE, in her 20s. She now offers angel readings and energy healings that build on the foundation of what she saw and felt during her SDE. A very interesting story. Rebecca, welcome to the show. Hi, Dale. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, the pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Let's get right into it, Rebecca. I'm going to ask you the same question I ask everyone. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your spiritual background first of all to get things kicked off um did you have any spiritual background when you were a child were your parents religious tell us a little bit about that well this is a great interesting question for me because i came from an interfaith family but we were very skeptical my dad was a very skeptical md phd uh, a doctor with a phd in biochemistry so First of all, I was skeptical. I didn't believe in miracles or another another realm. But also, um, I was raised Jewish, but my mom converted to Judaism and had come from like many years of ministers and eventually went back to Christianity. So I have a Jewish and Christian background in my childhood. And then my mom remarried a, an indigenous man in my 20s um, who was a big guide for me. He was um, actually an, a medicine man or a trator, they say in Louisiana. So he was a huge teacher for me as I had these mystical experiences. So all three of those are really important to me. <laughs> That's yeah. so interesting. Uh, yeah. did you say your mother married a medicine man. Yes. Uh, she married, I say she married two very different men. <laughs> they were both great oh, dads. Uh, <laughs> and right. I learned a lot from both of them, but my mm. stepdad um, came from a, a, a background that made, you know, where spirituality was really accepted and it was part of life. And when I had my spiritual experiences, he really was a guide and a helper for me because I was, I really freaked out a lot. I thought I was going really crazy. Wow. Tell us about that. Tell us about that. You felt like you were going crazy. You want me to tell you about the spiritual experience? Yes. Okay. Things. Let's go straight into it. Okay. So you, okay. you didn't have a, what, what we call a classical NDE, but you had what we call a spiritually transformative experience or STE. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Go right Let me tell that. you. So I did speak at IONS last year and I'm speaking again this year as a panelist. And when mm -hmm. I started, you know, after my experience, I thought I was reading all these near-death experiences. Like they really made a lot of sense, but mine happened while I was basically living my regular life. Um, but it kind of checks all the same boxes as an NDE. So um, it really started because I had a trauma at 13 that I was trying to heal from. And as I, you know, I went to therapy in college and after college and my therapists were like, you're fine. You're really good. And I was like, I, I don't feel like I'm good, but I was functioning in the world. And so I was I, at 23, I said, I want to heal all the way. And I just put that prayer out there. Just kind of like my life is not working. I was kind of trying to do things. I, you know, kind of been an, a straight A student, but nothing was really working well because I was, still, you know, hadn't really healed, even though, there, you know, the Western mm -hmm. model told me I was healed. Um, when I asked for teachers and when I asked to heal all the way, I started meeting people that helped me. So I met a Reiki teacher first at 23 that I thought was bananas. I was like, this is not real. I don't know why you're telling me this is real because I was so skeptical, but she 
would I would go to healings with her and I would feel so much better. And then, mm. um, and so then I started studying with her cause I had been really pretty miserable. And then I met a yoga teacher who was teaching me yoga. I was studying kind of intensive Ashtanga, um, that helped me sleep better. It helped me feel more embodied. And so I was doing both of those things. Um, and then I moved up to New York for graduate school, um, at teacher's college at Columbia university. And that's where my STE happened. Um, I was 26 when it started. It was January of my first year in grad school. I had had a little flu or an illness. I had also been reading The Tunnel and the Light by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. And I think both of those things together just did something to me because I was writing in my journal on my healing journey. I had started writing Dear God in my journal. And I was writing in my journal, Dear God, I'm in school. This is great. And then suddenly I felt taken over by a feeling, you know, some people call it the Holy Spirit. I don't know. I just was crying and I wrote that I wanted to devote my life to God. Just, I wasn't really planning on doing that. And I wrote, dear God, I have decided to give my life to you and whatever that entails. I want to be guided by you, by the light. Mm -hmm. I will work hard to follow this path and bring it to fruition. Please help me do this. Please help me bring light to other people. Thank you. Amen. And then I kept going in my journal entry and then I closed my journal and then I went to bed. Like, I don't know why I wrote that. I, I, but that night when I went to bed, I saw a light come over my bed and it went from one end of the room to right over me. And I felt like this light could see me. I felt like it loved me and I felt like it really knew me. And I was really scared for this light to see me because I was like, I'm not, I'm hiding. I'm not, I could just tell I was hiding a lot of myself. And I was like, oh my gosh, go away, go away. I was like, saw this light. I tensed up. And I told it to go away over and over again, which was not really nice, but I didn't really know what it was. And I didn't mm -hmm. really realize for a while that I didn't realize that that light came to me because of what I wrote. I, um, you know, I really thought I was going crazy, but that when I told the light to go away, I started feeling tingling in my head, um, spreading through my head, like love and peace. I thought it was a headache, but it was just love and peace going through my head. And, um, it then, if, a voice came into my head when I relaxed and it said, you don't have to be afraid, but if you are, you can wear a hat. It was like a very peaceful voice that just came into my head and said that I was 26 and I, it put a graduation hat in my mind's eye. And I just remember saying back to it, well, I, that's not a cute hat. And I tried to put a different hat into the voice because I was not a spiritual person. And mm -hmm. uh, when you do that, don't, if you ever get a download, don't talk back to the download voice, just like take it and accept it. Cause the okay. voice stopped at that point, but the experience started that that night. And for the next two years, I had all these spiritual experiences that came to me. And I say, it was like, I made this promise and my life was here and I had to like learn a lot of things to live in alignment with the promise. Um, so it, the first thing that happened was the next morning I woke up and I saw light coming out of everyone I passed. It was really, really beautiful. Everyone was glowing, like completely angelic, completely gorgeous. I, and I loved every person. I just never knew people were so beautiful. I never knew like how much love and light everyone had. And I just was walking to school, like, oh my gosh, everyone's in a beautiful angel. And I just loved everyone. Um, so that was the first thing. And, and then I started having psychic dreams like that week. Um, so I, these were just basic dreams that were telling me about my life. They were telling me about relationships I needed to mend, um, things that were happening with my friends, you know, over the years, it was like telling me about a car accident. I had a dream about carbon monoxide poisoning that I got and survived before it happened. Um, and so I've dreamed, had dreams like that ever since, but those started that week. And I just remember like, oh, I had like something would happen to be like, I had a dream about that. <laughs> you know, Like this is what's in my dream that I had the other night. So that was another thing that started happening. Um, I will say like, I remember calling, I had a boyfriend at the time we were living in Brooklyn together. And I remember calling him, like asking if he could see all these different things in the apartment. Like, Hey, could you see this thing on the window? Could you see? Cause I was like really checking myself to make sure I wasn't just losing it. I thought I was, but he, everything that I asked him about, he could see, I wasn't making up anything else. It was just really that light. And then all the spiritual things that happened, which now looking back, I know they were really real because they touched my soul and they happened at a level that was beyond me and beyond this world. Um, and they really felt very, um, deep in my, in my heart. So I also started feeling angels around me. Um, that was, 
happening right pretty much right when my STE was starting. So I felt I was going to sign up to study abroad. And the first time I noticed it, I felt two really tall angels at the other side of my shoulder, basically telling me not to do it. And I hadn't known that angels could be tall. I just remember feeling these angels are really tall and they don't want me to do that. So I didn't do it. I listened um, to what they were asking me to, to not go to the study abroad program. Um, you know, it's like my spiritual experience was really profound, but all of it was really basic. It was about my very basic life, which I think is really nice for people who are learning about spirituality. It was, you know, they were like, don't study abroad. It wasn't like some big prophecy about parting the Red Sea or anything. It was like <laughs> super normal stuff. Yeah. Um, I also started feeling how connected we all are. Um, like, so it was a little bit like a life review. Uh, I remember I hurt my sister's feelings by accident because I'd been a little careless and inattentive about what she needed. And I felt it, how much it really hurt her. Like, and I felt it in my soul and my body. And it was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could hurt people like that. And then I could also feel like how much it made a difference when I'm kind to someone, mm -hmm. so just really feeling how connected we all are and, um, bringing that kindness to people when I, um, when I approach, when I'm dealing with them, how much, I mean, even strangers on the street, it's so important. Um, I also started seeing alternate timelines in my life. So I saw one major alternate timeline and then I've seen little ones since, but, um, during those two years of my STE, which lasted from when I was 26 to 28, I was going to write a book and I opened up my computer. I was going to write about some of my experiences trying Judaism, which is part of my path. You know, I've mm -hmm. always been trying to fit my experience into different religious frameworks, which I'm mm -hmm. finally accepting. I can be all of it. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I was opened my computer to write about that. And I felt my I didn't just feel it. I saw my whole life live out. I saw a movie of my life and I was in the movie. If I did that, I saw the book getting published to bad reviews. I saw how depressed I would be. I saw like me dying kind of lonely and sad. And it was like so intense and I lived the whole life. And then I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. And um, that was really different for me. But I also, you know, after that time, especially towards the end of my STE and and for a while, even now a little bit, it's like every time I make a choice, I can feel the timeline and how my life is going to shift. And it's just a little bit, it's been overwhelming a little bit sometimes to make a choice. But now I know when you tune into your heart and your higher guidance, you can really go on the best path. Um, so another thing that happened during those two years was I overcame my nightmares. Um, I was having these horrible nightmares for my trauma. I, I called them demons, but I wasn't really raised to believe in demons. Um, mm -hmm. but they were just like a sleep paralysis where these like shadowy things would circle my bed every night for, since I was 13, even though I'd studied Reiki, even though I'd gone to therapy, even though blah, 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 those nightmares were still persistent and they would come and go. And they were basically nightly, they were horrible. Um, but this last nightmare I had, I was awakened in the middle of the night by it and it was circling me. It was trying to poke my heart, trying to get in, um, to my heart. And I just didn't, I knew so because of this light experience, I knew I didn't have to be afraid anymore. And I looked right at it and I said, you can't hurt me. God lives in me and works through me. And it just, I said that and it went mm -hmm. away. I said it several times. I was just like, I just knew I didn't have to be afraid. And I'd been so terrified of that dark that those entities whatever they were I know and there's many worldviews on these things but I they yes. never came back after that night I woke up the next day and I was like wow that was the best sign of my life I I told that nightmare to go away and I never had another one again and I literally I'm 44 now so this last one was like I was 26 or 27 so it's been a oh. really long time that was a very big night for me no um, yeah. yeah and then the last Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, I did see an aura around a tree. So I, I basically feel like I talk about it. Like I saw heaven on earth for two years. I was living mm -hmm. at such a high vibration because of the light I had called into my life that answered my prayer. I was like seeing, feeling angels, seeing these timelines, all of this it was so mm -hmm. beautiful. I saw light in everyone. Everything was working out. I also saw an aura flash around a tree right before it died. And it really scared me because I didn't know, like, I'd never seen anything like that, but, um, the last part of my experience was I was, uh, had a beautiful dream about an angel that I thought was a real person for a long time. I was in my room and it was, this was the end of my experience. I was having, dr dr dreaming that I was talking to this beautiful glowing person who, and mm -hmm. I was complaining about my life and I was saying, life is hard. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing. And he looked at me with so much love. He was just radiating love. He was glowing and he was 
full of light and just saying life is amazing. You need to go out and have a great life and go out and have adventures and go live your life. Mm -hmm. Um, and as it was like, he looked at me, but it was like, every time he looked, it was like, he was seeing deeper and deeper into my soul. And it was like, I was fully seen. And I was like, Whoa, I love this person. Like I really was 27 or 28. I don't remember. I thought mm -hmm. he was like the love of my life. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> In the dream. I was like, how, what's your name? When am I going to meet you? And he was like, my name's Jonathan. And you'll meet me when you're finished swimming. And the dream shifted from me being lowered from a huge ship down into the ocean. And I just had to start swimming out alone into this ocean. And when mm -hmm. I woke up the next morning, my whole, everything was over. It was like the light pulled back. It was so hard. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'd felt surrounded by these angels, by all this light. I was having this beauty. And I thought, I'm going to learn all this stuff. And then when it's over, I'm going to go live in heaven. This is great. And I had this dream and it was like, you're going to have to learn how to swim. And, mm -hmm. and then I woke up the next day and it was like, it really felt like everything pulled back and it uh, was very hard because I didn't know why I was here and I didn't understand that swimming was like going to be doing that for the rest of my life. It was basically, that was the metaphor that I needed to learn how to deal with my spiritual experiences and be a spiritual person, mm -hmm. which is what I've been doing for the last 15 years. I didn't share about this for 15 years, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the main, that's my main story. I've been that's figuring out how to swim this whole time. I wish you would have said in the dream, mm -hmm. you'll meet me when you're finished swimming, when you die. Yeah. But I was like every yeah. few months, I was like, I think I'm done swimming and I'm going to meet this awesome guy now. And it was right. like, no, this is not, right, right. not how it goes. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. So. Yeah. That was, that's amazing. So your spiritually transformative experience lasted a, a, a full two years. Yeah. It was like, that's what you're saying. It was two years. It was like 26 to 28. And I just had these intervals of experiences just random. I didn't know what prompted them. I didn't know when they were coming. I couldn't mm -hmm. create them. It was just like whenever the right time was, I was going to grad school the whole time, um, trying to just keep it together till I thought I was going to go to heaven. But just kidding. I was going to stay here. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was it, uh, it must have been tricky during that two years to integrate that. Uh, like how were you able to live a normal life and yet have all these amazing things going on at the same time? How were you able to navigate those? I love those? that question. Yeah, thank you for asking that. No one's really asked yeah. me that in that way. But mm -hmm. part of what I talk about is that I had this trauma at 13 that no one knew about. And I had developed mm -hmm. a skill set of living a life on the surface. I learned, oh, like I have to get along in school. I have to do well. I can know how to have friends. And then I had this like internal world that was really separate from what I was going through. Um, sadly that was like the sad side of it, but this, I had already learned how to do that. And it was like, uh, but I did have some mentors that helped me. So I was, you know, I was going to school and I was going to class. I was dating, I had friends, whatever. And then I was mm -hmm. having all these things happen. but I did go meet, wow. um, my stepdad helped me a lot. He taught me a lot. He had a lot of dreams about me during this. Also, mm -hmm. I found a shaman on Google in New York, but you know, it seems like a very random thing to find, but actually that's one of the first psychic dreams I had. I dreamt the whole session before I met him, I had a dream about wow. him, his office, what it looked like, what it was. And it was like, mm -hmm. he was a major, I, I thought he was nuts. I would just go be like, why am I sitting in your office? And you're just telling me this crazy stuff. Like the whole world is a dream. And I, he nice. would, he helped me a lot. Cause I was like, I'm losing my mind and I needed to talk with someone. So yeah. that was kind of, I had him and I had my stepdad that really helped me. Cause otherwise I was just kind of like, yeah. It was interesting. It was an interesting thing to go through that way. It was no uh, kidding, not no kidding. what I expected my life to be like. <laughs> oh, yeah. No kidding. Well, much grace and peace to you. That's uh, incredible to go through that. Now, uh, you had mentioned a little bit about timelines and you had mentioned mm -hmm. uh, during your STE that you were able to notice that every time, was I correct in hearing this right? Was yeah. I correct in hearing that every time you make a choice, it will sort of like spin off another timeline and um so i take it that you believe in the many worlds theory do you know the many worlds theory i guess so i do think yeah. i believe in that because i've seen it you know it's yeah it's yeah funny to go through these things and then just decide i mean but yeah i think yeah. that there's many timelines and i've i saw different timelines and and mm. I've, I'm on this one now. Yeah. Was, is that what the many worlds theory is that there's many yeah, the, yeah the many worlds theory is like i do something called quantum jumping I don't know oh, if you're familiar cool. with quantum jumping. Quantum jumping is where you deliberately, well, we quantum jump many times every day. Every time the idea is that every time we make a choice, it, it, it creates a new timeline. Yes. Uh, I do think but so. you can actually do it deliberately. Uh, so it's a little different than manifesting because when you manifest, you want to get something that you 
feel is missing. But in this idea, you are completely okay with what is so that you can choose the other reality that already exists of you. Oh, yeah. So there's there's a rich you, there's a sick you, there's a healthy yeah. you, there's all these different. And yeah. that's what I hear you saying a little bit, because you said you had a, uh, a situation where you uh, saw yourself writing a book, and then you saw yourself getting bad reviews, and then something like dying all alone or something. Yes, it was so, so intense. It was so like, like, but I lived it. It was like, I've lived that little timeline. It was so intense. Right, right. So do you think that's something that is, because the idea is, that everything is happening in the now yeah. so all of these lives are sort of stacked next to each other and yeah. then depending what choice we make we're going to go down that particular road that's yep. i hear you kind of confirming that with your that's, experience that's what i saw for sure and that's it's very interesting and it's also mm. like free will is such a huge thing that what we choose mm. comes to be and it's also interesting with timelines I've thought about, you know, when I was in my twenties and going through this, my stepdad sat, well, I was in the living room with him when I was back home in Louisiana. And he was like, you're going to be very popular one day, but you need to be strong. And I was like, I think he's talking about this and I'm never going to do that. And the shaman looked and when I went to him the first time, he's like, you're going to be a teacher, but you need to be strong. I was like, okay, this is not, I'm not going to go down that timeline. I'm never going to talk about this. I just remember just like, no. But now here yeah. I am, like whatever those guys were tuning into, whatever they could see, they were seeing like probably the most probable timeline that I tried yeah. to avoid for a long time. But it was really yeah. my highest soul path to really talk about this. And it is, mm -hmm. I really feel like it's just interesting when people can tune in and they saw separate separately, they saw this part of my mm -hmm. timeline right now that I was really quite scared to jump onto. <laughs> yes, yes. But isn't it always that way, right? Because um, the part of us that believes in separation uh, some people call it ego. So the part of us that believes that we're separate from God and separate, whatever God right. is, we're separate from that. We're also separate from each other. That's the part that wants to keep us safe and in the comfort zone. Yeah. So it sounds to me like uh, you're like, no, I'm never going to go down. Never going <laughs> to do that. But then, and like, as much as I tried to avoid what they had both seen in my twenties, whatever this, this current timeline is where I'm talking about it. I hope I'm hoping that I waited long enough that whatever they were talking about me having to be strong is not going to happen, <laughs> but I guess I've already had to be strong. I've had to be pretty brave to share my story, at least in my world. But, um, yeah. I, uh, I felt a really strong urge last spring. So spring of 2023, I had never talked about this experience. I had just kept it to myself. I told a couple, one friend a little bit, and then it was like, well, maybe I dreamed that all, you know, like it happens at such a different level of our lives. And but then I felt a really strong push from my guides and angels that I needed to submit to speak at IANS. I needed mm -hmm. to go and do that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this is like, that was the timeline jump because I was living my speech pathology wife. I do my thing. I have a kid. Nobody knows it. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm going to apply to speak. And they accepted. And it was like, then now I'm on this total different timeline. I mean, I'm still yeah. having those other aspects of my life, but I'm sharing about it on podcasts. I'm openly healing and speaking about my experiences. So it's interesting when you jump that timeline and it's like kind of everything just goes. It's interesting about the quantum jumping that you do because I kind of feel like I did that a little bit. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And yeah. I, I think you noticed that you said your guides and your angels were really encouraging you to to go on this uh, path where you're sharing and the I ends. And you notice that everything just seems to open up for you, yes? Yes. Everything's like flowing fairly smoothly. That's how you know that you're on the right track right. like yeah. with your highest uh, timeline I, I yeah. call it your highest timeline I love that and that's probably yeah. this and that's what actually interesting because mm -hmm. my stepdad taught me about that in the indigenous cultures he called he called it the red road where mm -hmm. you're really on your true path and you're blessing the world and you're blessing mm -hmm. others and you're living in like the way that everything flows so it's definitely a concept that transcends cultures so that's really cool I think this is my highest timeline. I think I'm still working it out, but I'm, I think I'm there. I was, I'm glad yeah. to be here and I'm appreciative that you brought me on your show to talk about oh, it. Oh, I'm, I'm so grateful to have you. You're, you're the type of voice that I want to feature, you know, on this uh, podcast because it's such a light to the entire world. It, yeah. The world, the world needs it right now, right? There's a lot of darkness out there, but there's a lot of light too. Yeah. So, and I think you're yeah. shining the the, the light in the dark and so that's really good so so you've been speaking at IANS you said yes I, I was on how's that how's that going for you it was great you know the night before so I'd never talked about this experience and I was like I'm gonna do this I got accepted I went to the conference 
and I've met all these people that I've been idolizing secretly because I've been secretly reading your death experience and you know because yes. they they made so much sense to me um, yeah. anyway I had I spoke and I had the biggest panic attack of my life the night before oh. it was full body it was like all the fear I'd been holding for over the years about mm. talking about this maybe fear mm -hmm. that my they had instilled mm -hmm. by telling me I had to be strong even though I don't think they meant wrong by it but <laughs> I yeah, just really internalized that fear and I I let it go and I spoke and people laughed I had people cracking up because I talked about how hard it was to date when people are glowing you know stuff like <laughs> it was pretty funny and it really was hard to date because everyone was so beautiful yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway it went well and then after that I've I've been on podcasts ever since talking about it. I'm going to be a panelist again this year and I'm just like very thankful because also people are able yeah. to find me and you know I offer readings and healings and it's it's a, been a way for people to find the work that I offer because of my experience and what I saw mm -hmm. and felt I offer um readings and healings so so how long have you been doing the offering the healings and the readings? Um, I have, I offered them for a little while before I spoke. It was like kind of a sec not secret, but I had like, I would tell some people I had a little place where I worked and it was kind of small. Um, mm -hmm. But um, so maybe, you know, I started studying Reiki when I was 23. So I've been doing Reiki mm -hmm. for over 20 years at this point. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But uh, integrating it and offering it you know, in a way where I'm really relying on what I learned has taken a few years. Uh, but now mm -hmm. I offer readings all around the world. I had a reading in Finland, a healing in fin in Finland this morning and a reading in Germany. I did not fly right. there. They were on Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that the, that's the beautiful thing about Zoom, right? Yeah. It's been now you can. Uh, and I'm yes, in I'm in Canada. You're in Colorado. Yeah, that's yeah, great. That's really, great. It's, it's amazing. It's really cool to do a, a distance healing or distance reading because you just see that the how we're all energy and like. <laughs> It doesn't mm -hmm. matter where someone's physical body is, and you know the exactly, energy. exactly. Now I want to ask you this question: Is that um, how does your family respond to your STE? Okay, well, are 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 your parents still with us? Or my mom and dad are. Um, mm -hmm. My stepdad, he was very supportive. He knew mostly about it, mm. uh, but my dad and my mom. So my mom is a very religious Catholic, and my dad is a very kind of skeptical Jewish man and i i don't know my mom i've told her my story and from a christian perspective she resonates and appreciates it because mm -hmm. it is it does have some aspects so she's been very supportive but she doesn't always want to hear about my readings but she did say i have a charism which i think it's a catholic uh a word charism? for like charism it's like your a healing gift that you get oh okay and when you're catholic so she okay. said oh you have a charism i was like okay so she has a language that makes sense for her I haven't yeah. talked much about it with my dad. He knew I submitted to speak at a conference because I was at his, his condo in New Orleans when I was submitting. He was like, oh, a conference. I know how to submit. I was like, don't, yeah, I don't need any help with this conference. <laughs> I was mm -hmm. like, because, but he, I don't know. I haven't really talked about it with him, but uh, he, I do, I'm really appreciative of that like skeptical mindset because it helped me really mm -hmm. question all the things that happened to me in a way that was like, um, it, you know, I was raised to be like really smart about stuff and mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this happened to me. And I think it's really smart to just accept that it was a real experience, you know, but, um, so I don't know. I, my dad loves and, and is supportive of me. Oh, I think good. he would just be like, well, if it makes you happy, keep doing it, I guess. <laughs> but okay. I haven't well, asked that's... him because I'm kind of embarrassed. It's like, sure. I don't know, yeah. might not be that smart dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, right. Well, I guess not, not everybody's ready to hear this either, right? So at the right time, maybe, yeah. right? Yeah, and, we'll and, see. And, mm -hmm. He's what pretty... about... Oh yeah. What well, what about your husband? You have a husband, right? I do have a husband. He's is, is he on the same. No. Oh, okay. So not on the same. <laughs> I was. I met him when I wasn't talking about this stuff, but I have a oh. lot of actually a lot of atheist friends that are very accepting yeah. of my experiences. I guess my yeah. I as it was written in conversations with God. God doesn't create atheists. Religion creates atheists, and I kind of mm. think that that is an interesting concept because my husband thinks mm -hmm. religion usually divides people. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of his issue with it, but I, he, he's mostly material reductionist as well. So I don't know if he believes in a spiritual side of life, but he's supportive of me because he's a, he does business. So he's like, if you can have a, a business that's functioning, then that's okay. fine. You know, like you're making, right. just get Taylor Swift as a client. You'll be good. I don't have to. Oh yeah. Well, 
that that will boost uh yeah having that's one, just the world view that he sees celebrity it right so right. like he's supportive in the way that he knows how to be but he's not a mm-hmm. he's definitely not spiritual but he does have psychic dreams and he's pretty intuitive so oh, really? i kind of wish he'd just jump over to the other side yeah he has he picks up on a lot of stuff he had a dream that we were married bef- like the second time we hung out and he was like oh my gosh i had a dream mm-hmm. we were married and you know we didn't even we were just dating barely dating and then we ended up married mm-hmm. so He's pretty psychic. He just well, I think that, that that's that's very interesting. So he's an atheist, but he still has these psychic dreams. So what does he make of it? He thinks it's all just a big coincidence. These dreams. Yeah, They're I mean, just... he's had that one dream. I don't know if he's had more, but the, the stuff that he said about people that we know, he just picks up on a lot of things going on with people a lot. Mm-hmm. So I don't really, I don't know what he makes of it. He's he's into the like simulation theory right now. He's into sci-fi, so that's like kind of close. It's not that well, far so, from what I do. So, so maybe he uh, he's into the quantum jumping stuff. He is. Maybe oh, he, he's really he, into timelines. I was like, have you listened to that. my story? I I saw a timeline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, so all right. So he so he does get with a lot of your spiritually yeah. transformative story he's yeah. like oh, okay it resonates on some level yeah, with him i think so yeah i think okay so, sure. so when you say an atheist you just mean he doesn't believe in god yeah, that's what you mean by like god is love do you believe in love in everyone's hearts like that's, right. you know what i'm just kind of a right, but yeah right. he doesn't believe in the religion that he was raised with i guess okay i got it yeah that makes okay <clears throat> wow i mean everybody's I always say wherever someone's at on the journey, it's perfect for them. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You know? And I always say you'll just know you'll know after we die, which isn't very nice, <laughs> but I do think he'll understand what I'm trying to explain to him. There but, you go. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. So what um what's the most important lesson that you think you've learned from your STE? Um, that's a great question. <clears throat> I feel like you know, I saw heaven on earth for those two years and I think we can create that here right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we can create a beautiful world and we can align with that love and share with others and um, have that. I would love that. It would be beautiful. Um, I also learned that um, we always have guidance and angels with us. And that was a very beautiful thing to learn. And that there's just like God really loves each of us and answers our prayers. You don't have to use the word God. You can use the word universe, love, whatever you want, sure. divine love. But um, yeah. I, you know, I made that prayer really sincerely, and it got answered. So I think um, prayers can really be answered. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Even it, if it, you don't need to make them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I bet you never thought it would be like it would last for two years after you made that prayer, where you said I. What, what did you say? I give everything to you. I want to give my whole um, life to you. Uh-huh. I devote my life to God. I want to bring light to right. other people. Help me do this. I mean, what was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. I was. <laughs> it just came through me. It was like a, the prayer that came through me, and then it got answered. But it was very. It was so beautiful. Yeah, it was answered for like two years. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, like really. Yeah. And it was like, but it was all just very random. Like after it started, yeah. I was like, how can I get back there? I want to, how do I have, make it happen? I couldn't make in oh, all of those otherworldly heavenly experiences. I couldn't force them. It was like, they yeah. were just like being handed to me at random times. It just spontaneously. Came. Yeah. I was like, whatever was making sense in my soul with like the divine was like coming to mm-hmm. me and then it ended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't now, know. Obviously, like that. obviously it appeared to end, but of course, um, Right. Your life is unfolding now and you're yeah. still in that place of surrender to God. So God's still answering your prayer, albeit maybe it not took me as a little ex- while to extreme. come, you know. Yeah, not it as wasn't a, as, as visual. Extreme. It was like learn how to swim. But I for a while I was well, like, I definitely just made all that up. I'm I'm nuts. Even with the nice mentors I had, my stepdad and the shaman, I was like, that's crazy. I was just and I, I mm-hmm. really ignored it. So I would I would love to say I'd been surrendered to God this whole time after my experience, but for a while I really questioned it and I denied it and I was mad that I was left here after it because it was so beautiful the light and the love Mm -hmm. I felt having been left here and not getting to go right to heaven like somehow I thought I was just gonna die at the end and go live in heaven I didn't know why I thought that it just for some reason I'm learning all this stuff and I'll just go yeah yeah. it took me like quite a while to get back get on the path of connect the reconnecting and surrendering sure all that so sure and what what do you think it was that um caused the actual ste itself to stop 
because it lasted like two years. That's a long time, right? It Most kind people's of was, STDs it, don't last that long, I it don't was, think. well, yeah, and it was just like coming in these little moments, but uh, oh, I think it was like, I think it was the structure of grad school, and I think when they put that first like message was like, they put a hat on my head. If I was scared, it was like the, it was a graduation hat, mm. and I think now that I've been thinking about it a little bit more now that I'm talking about it, it might have been that I needed, like my experience kind of happened the whole time I was in grad school and then it ended like around the time I finished grad school mm -hmm. I don't know so it was like able to I don't know why it was two years but that's just I think everyone has experiences that are perfect for them yes. so like some people might need one flash or a full NDE or have small experiences and mine was just like whatever my soul was doing whatever however God or the angels decided to work with me it was over these couple years mm -hmm. I don't know why it lasted so long, but it wasn't like it was all full time. It was like I was living in alignment with the light and I was having these dreams and feeling mm -hmm. really in, in the flow. But it was just like little random things that happened. So time wise, it probably was just a month, but it was spread out over two years, you know, mm -hmm. or like sure. a few moments really spread out. Now, do, do you still get the... um? The psychic dreams? Yeah, I still get them. And, um, you know, it's mm -hmm. interesting. So after my experience ended, I wanted to go try to figure out how I could get back to heaven or get back to God. And I went and lived in the mm -hmm. woods. And I was like, pretty sure if I live here, I'll figure this out. <laughs> but I never mm -hmm. figured it out. But I, mm -hmm. uh, I've had psychic dreams, like the most psychic dreams I've ever had, because I was pretty removed. I still had a job and friends, but like, I was mostly mm -hmm. living in this cabin in the woods. Oh, that's I had a ton of psychic dreams. And it's interesting that like when my I still have psychic dreams now, but like my life is mm -hmm. a little busier. Maybe I'm living more in alignment, but I have dreams about my friends if they need something. I have dreams that about things that are going to happen still. I can pray for guidance in my dreams. So, you know, a lot of mm -hmm. people ask for signs or feel it in meditation, but I'll like often I'll pray before I go to bed if I need guidance for something in my life. Like I prayed for yeah. a spiritual teacher a few years ago because I hadn't had one in a while. And I had a dream I was in a class with Suzanne Giesman, who was like the last person mm -hmm. I expected to have as my spiritual teacher, because I was like, she's a medium. I'm not. But uh, mm -hmm. she's like an amazing spiritual teacher. And I've learned a ton from her. And it's what I use a lot in my angel readings is what I've learned with her. So, mm -hmm. so that's Very kind nice. of like it's psychic dreams and also asking for guidance dreams like my stepdad did too. So Very nice. So you said you lived in a cabin. How long did you live in the cabin for? Yeah, well... <laughs> a couple of years, like for, for a while, it was like a small cabin in the town. And then I moved like further out into a hundred acres of woods. And that was like two years. So at and that I time met... you weren't, you weren't dating your husband at that time. No, I did date some other people, but it was kind of like, not that, you know, you don't, but it was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, I loved it. In fact, I would go do that again anytime. It was really beautiful. Yeah, it sounds I interesting. About how I, I faced all my fears, like as a woman living alone in a cabin, but I was I loved it. And it was very interesting mm -hmm. to have that many psychic dreams. It was like every night I would have a psychic dream because I was like basically very removed from the world. But so eventually no internet. I was like, I need to go back and do the world. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. So, so no internet, no cell phone. I did have internet. Yeah. I had internet and I just, oh, okay. but it was like a small one bedroom cabin that was really mm. lovely. It had a big porch and looked down on a bunch of woods and mm -hmm. I would see animals and wow. it was very peaceful. That sounds extraordinary. So was uh, was that in the Colorado countryside? No, I'm from Louisiana. That was in rural oh, right. Louisiana. And, oh, okay, um, rural Louisiana. Yeah, okay. but it was a beautiful little town. And I, I mean, it's not like I was just a hermit. I had friends and I would go to New Orleans, but it was like two hours mm -hmm. away. And basically when I was mm -hmm. alone, I was completely alone. And I really did love it. But I had to be careful. Yeah. I feel like I have that pull to like just disappear from my STE, but I, I, I've uh, learned I can be integrated and meditate and be anywhere and be connected to the mm -hmm. divine, which has been a big, big part of my journey. So cool. And you're, and are you still doing speech pathology as well? Or yeah, I do. I, you know, that's been a really yeah. constant in my life. And sometimes yeah. I think, Oh, maybe I should just do healing, but I saw a speech kid today. I love them. They're very sweet. Children are so beautiful and working with kids right. is really fun. And it's right. grounding for me too to have like a normal job. <laughs> so yeah, good kids. Yeah. So you work with uh, children on the spectrum. You said. Yeah, some of them on the spectrum. <clears throat> I um, it depends on the job I'm doing, but right now I'm working um with kids and some adults with many different diagnoses. So some articulations, some mm -hmm. autism spectrum, mm -hmm. um, 
I had an adult with fragile X syndrome last week. It's very special. I, mm -hmm. And, you know, when I started grad school before my STE, I was like, I'm just going to do research. I am going to do research and go work in a hospital or whatever. And then it was mm -hmm. like, as my STE unfolded by the end, I was like, I'm only going to go work with children. <laughs> and like, I just wanted to help like people in a different way than I'd ever really cared about, you know, before mm -hmm. my experience. So how do you think the STE informs your work with the kids and the adults in the speech oh, yeah. pathology. That's an interesting, uh, I'm just curious, like yeah. it must bring some light yes. and love to the oh, whole thing. Definitely. I mean, it is yeah. all about, I see the kid as a full soul and I work with them from that perspective with all the love and just mm -hmm. being with them and being present. Um, it's really beautiful. And uh, I think it, you know, it just makes me see it from a more loving perspective. It's, yes. uh, it's really great. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, well, I um, I want to ask, um, how can people get in contact? Because you give readings now. Okay, so do you do Reiki as well? Okay, so I do energy can... healing. So I do, do... angel okay. readings. So basically, angel the readings. two things I offer are angel readings and energy healing. And so in an angel reading, you can okay. find me at my website, rebeccacastle.com. It's R-E-B-E-C-C-A-K-A-S-T-L.com. Okay. And I um, I tune into your angels and guides and I, I tell you what I hear from them. And they're always very beautiful, very supportive. I usually, I have a lot of first time ever readings. Like they've never gotten a psychic reading. They've never gotten a past. And I'm the first reading they've ever had, which means so much. Or I also have re return clients or I have people that have had different readings, but it's really means a lot. And I read for people from all backgrounds all around the world, many religious backgrounds. I've had Mormon clients. I've had Muslim clients. I've had Christian clients and Jewish clients for readings, which means a lot to me because of my background. Cool. So yeah, I love yeah. that. Any atheist clients or like agnostic. Um, <laughs> and then I also do energy healing. So I will um, do like a combination of Reiki and like angelic guidance for what areas mm -hmm. to treat and, mm -hmm. um, how to, you know, clearing and bringing you back into your true self and mm -hmm. kind of sounds similar to what you do, which I really want to try, which sounds very cool. The emotion code. Yeah. We so should do a trade. We should do a trade. You Let's do, do an a angel trade. reading. I would, I would love that. You do an angel reading for me because I'm curious. Okay, how's my podcast going to unfold? Or right. maybe my guides have certain... Yeah, I kind of do that where I'll ask, I talk to my guides and I'll say, okay, what should I do next? Oh, <laughs> Especially great. if something comes in, then they give me these little breadcrumbs. They'll say, call this person, do this, do that. That's and then I just like follow the the trail of breadcrumbs. And That's it always, awesome that you're so tuned in. It good for you. Leads, it leads to something good whenever I do that. But when I try to figure it out myself, it is, it's a disaster. No, for sure. <laughs> so I, I just know. like okay, I'll, I'll stick with the guides. They know, they know. The, they do. They can see from the full perspective. Out. That's like what yes. it is. They can see the timeless everything. So Very exactly, cool. and it makes life magical, exciting, and fun. It, it makes life wonderful. You know the journey and stuff. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah. and I feel that you are a magical soul, and I really appreciated having you on this show. Mm -hmm. And I want to, so people can reach out to you through your website. We'll put yes. your website underneath the the yes, in the show notes and the underneath your face on here. And um, um, do you have Facebook or do you? Yeah, prefer well, I have Instagram. I have my Instagram, mm -hmm. which is at Rebecca Castle. I have. A TikTok, which is basically the same thing as what I post on Instagram. I do like angel written mm -hmm. angel messages that I get every day onto Instagram, at least where I, oh, cool. I, I download these little messages and share them. That's I also nice. have a sub stack where I write about like all my different experiences and it's called the accidental mystic. Um, okay. And I just go in depth about like when I lived in a cabin, that was my last entry. I just write once a week about different random things that I experienced. So it's just nice. kind of like for fun. <laughs> But that I would love for you to get in touch. Great. I love doing readings for people and healings. It's uh, it used so a cool. lot of what I learned. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so cool. So yeah. um, now I'm going to ask you one last question that I ask everybody. If there's something that you could share with the whole world, what would it be? It would just be to love each other and to to see each person as a human before you, no matter what your differences and beliefs or backgrounds. Um, just to approach with the heart because that's really what heals our planet and our society so thank you very much rebecca i appreciate having you on the podcast today oh it's so fun thank you for having me you're great thank you dale all right we'll have to have you back for part two someday 
I would love that. Catch up where you're at. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you very much, everybody. That's another edition of the Soul Inspire podcast. Uh, see you next time. The Soul Inspire podcast is brought to you by dalecross.net. Discover the freedom, bliss, and ecstasy within you. At dalecross.net, I can help connect you with your soul's purpose, passion, and mission. Your soul signed up for something great. Discover what it is with the tools I offer. Book a free one-on-one -on -one consultation now at dalecross.net and live your greatness. Thank you.